Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery. Welcome to our series on how to make apps with no programming experience. Uh, so in these couple of episodes, we're going to take you through a whole tutorial and by the end of it, you'll have made your first app with Swift and Xcode ready for your iPhone. In this episode, we're going to talk about everything that you need, all the tools and materials in order to develop iOS apps. So let's get started. First and foremost, you will need a Mac of some sort. Um, now, it doesn't need to be the latest and greatest with the highest end specs. Um, in fact, I've been developing for iOS apps on a pretty bashed up MacBook Air for about three years now. And it's only got four gigabytes of RAM, but it's never failed me yet. Fingers crossed. Um, if you don't currently have a Mac, the easiest and cheapest solution is probably to just get a secondhand Mac Mini, which uh, goes for pretty cheap. The reason why we need a Mac is because you will need a software called Xcode 7. Now, this is something that Apple makes and you can download it for free on the Mac App Store. Um, and it is there in order for you to write code for your iOS apps, to design your apps. And also it has a inbuilt simulator that allows you to run and test out your apps if you don't have an iPhone. So go ahead and download Xcode 7, which is the version that we'll be working with. And make sure that you have um, OS X 10.10.4 or above. So if you're on Yosemite, just go up into the top left corner, go into um, the Apple symbol, and then um, check on about this Mac and just check to make sure that your OS X is above 10.10.4. And if it's not, then you can go to the app, Mac's app, Mac app store and download the latest version of OS X. And it's free to upgrade from Yosemite to El Capitan, um, which also works just fine. So this is a question that I get very frequently. Um, can I make iOS apps on a PC? And the answer is yes, theoretically, but it is very complicated and it's usually more trouble than it's worth. Um, mostly because there isn't a simple solution and Apple doesn't really support it. So your life will be quite difficult. But either way, I've listed some options here and also in the description below, you'll see a link to how to go about doing this. But just to say that this is not what we recommend, um, I would recommend just getting some sort of secondhand cheap Mac and it will make your life so much easier. So the next question I usually get is, can I make an app um, for Android and iOS simultaneously? Um, so build once and deploy everywhere sort of idea. And yes, there are various services such as PhoneGap, Xamarin, etc. that uses other languages than Swift or Objective-C to make iOS and Android apps. But again, it's not supported by Apple and there isn't, there isn't a lot of support generally online. So if you got stuck with a particular problem in Xamarin, it'll be very difficult to find the solution for it. Whether, whereas if you have problems in Xcode, because most professional developers and a lot of other people um, use Xcode, then there's usually more solutions online. Um, recently, um, a story from one of our clients is that uh, we got hired on a project mostly because their previous app developer worked in Titanium and they then went on a two-year um, indefinite holiday to uh, the Caribbean and um, basically left the uh, the company high and dry. They couldn't find a good quality titanium developer. And so we were actually drafted in to produce a whole new native app from scratch. So they actually scrapped everything that they had before. So this is another thing to consider. And at the London Library, we would recommend just stick with Xcode, use a Mac, get something secondhand and cheap, and you will have no problems. Cool, so uh, the final point I wanna make is that not every idea should be an app. In fact, a lot of ideas and a lot of companies um, do just fine with a really beautiful mobile responsive website. Um, unless, of course, you know, you need sensors or if you need notification features, 
then that's the point where you want to build a native app within uh, the phone. So there's a really great website called appsvswebsite.com and it's a free tool made by the awesome guys at Crew. Um, here you can answer a couple of questions such as, is your budget over 10K? Or do you need location-based navigational elements? And test your idea against um, these questions and they will tell you whether if an app or a website is your best option. So go and check it out. Cool, so finally, you will need an iPhone if you want to deploy your app to the App Store because first it needs to be tested on a physical iPhone and not just in the simulator. But if at this stage, you know, you're just trying it out, learning it, getting your feet wet, then I would recommend hold off from buying an iPhone if you don't have one yet. And at the point where you're ready to um, deploy onto the App Store, then at that point, get an iPhone. Um, so this also applies to the Apple Developer Program. So this is a $99 per year program, uh, which you pay Apple for, for the privilege of uploading your apps to the App Store. Um, and also up until about three months ago, you could only test your apps on a physical iPhone or iPad if you had the Apple Developer Program. But since Xcode 7 um, was released, it now introduced a feature where you can sideload your apps. So that means that you can run and install your apps that you build in Xcode on your physical iPhone without paying Apple. So this is a new feature. And we used to recommend, you know, if you're committed to making iOS apps, you might as well sign up for the developer program, you know, from the get go. But now I would recommend to hold off and, you know, just start developing, see how you like it. And once you get to the point where you're ready to put it on the App Store, then go and sign up. Because, I mean, you, you renew it year on a yearly basis. So you might as well um, only pay for it when you're ready to upload it to the App Store. So with the Apple Developer Program, you get obviously the privilege of uploading it to the App Store and earning revenue. But also you get a bunch of tools through iTunes Connect. Um, such as analytics and looking at your sales and trends um, and also you get to upload your apps through this portal. So that's it. That's everything that you need in order to make iOS apps. So go ahead, um, make sure that your Mac is running uh, at least Yosemite 10.10.4 or El Capitan and go to the App Store and download the latest version of Xcode which is Xcode 7 that we'll be using in these tutorials. And once you're ready, come back to the next episode, which is a grand tour of Xcode 7. And we're going to run through how the different panes work, what is the layout and how to use it. So from us at London App Brewery, we look forward to seeing you next time.